Rhea stood in the dimly lit studio, her heart pounding like a relentless drum. The weight of her decision pressed heavily on her shoulders, a burden that grew with each passing second. Her voice, once a source of joy and freedom, had become quite the double-edged sword, slicing through the lives of those who listened. Her fans, once adoring and supportive, had transformed into obsessive followers, unable to escape the grip of her haunting melodies. The thought of what she had done to them filled her with dread on a daily basis. Dr. Evans, a man of science and reason, stood across from her, his brow furrowed in concentration. His lab was a stark contrast to the chaos, this world within Rhea's mind. The walls were lined with shelves, each crammed with strange instruments and sound equipment that hummed with latent energy. His fingers danced over the controls of a large mixing board. Wait, what? Adjusting frequencies with precision that only years of expertise could bring. Rhea, his voice steady and calm, he began. We're dealing with something unprecedented. Your voice operates on frequencies that affect the human brain and psyche in such ways that we've never seen before. It's as if your vocal cords are attuned to that primal part, something that triggers deep-seated responses in all of us. Rhea nodded, her throat tight with anxiety. She had known this for a few days, but hearing it confirmed by a man of Dr. Evans' stature made it all the more terrifying. We need to develop a counter melody, he continued, something that can disrupt the effect your voice has on people without destroying the essence. But it won't be easy. The melody has to be perfect. The two of them spent hours and days poring over the sound waves and frequency charts that scattered across his desk. Their minds worked in tandem, despite the tension building between them. Ray had always relied on her intuition when singing, and now she had to rely on cold, hard science, a world she barely understood. When the first attempt was ready, Ray took a deep breath, trying to steady her nerves. She sang the counter melody, her voice trembling slightly. As the notes filled the room, they clashed violently against her original melody, creating a dissonance that was almost painful to bear. Dr. Evans monitored the results on his equipment, his eyes narrowing as he analyzed the data coming in. Something was wrong. The dissonance grew, the sound waves spiking erratically on screen. Rhea's voice, normally so controlled, began to waver as the counter melody spiraled out of control. The feedback loop created a screeching sound that reverberated through the studio, sending a shockwave of pain through Rhea's very skull. She clutched her head, gasping as the overwhelming noise brought her to her knees. Dr. Evans cut the power plunging the room into silence. Rhea's breaths came in ragged gasps, her ears ringing. The attempt had failed, and it had failed spectacularly. What happened? she whispered, still reeling from the experience. We underestimated the complexity of the sound waves your voice produces, Dr. Evans replied grimly. The counter melody wasn't strong enough. It couldn't neutralize the effects, only amplify them for some reason. If we're not careful, we can make things worse. The studio was silent except for the soft hum of the equipment still running. The walls, usually a cocoon of soundproof padding, now felt like they were closing in on her. The red light of the recording indicator blinked menacingly, casting an airy glow on the consoles. Ray could almost feel the echoes of the feedback loop still bouncing off the walls in her mind, as if the room itself had absorbed the pain of her failure. Her body was still trembling. 
her head pounding from the screeching feedback that had overwhelmed her. She could still feel the echoes of that dissonance. Deep in her bones, a painful reminder of how dangerous her power had become. Dr. Evans quickly moved to her side, his expression a mix of concern and determination. Are you all right? He asked, his voice gentler than before. Rhea nodded weakly, though she wasn't sure if she was telling the truth. She stared at the floor, a memory surfaced. As she stared at the floor, a memory surfaced. Her mother's voice, soft but firm. Rhea, our voices are a gift, but they come with a curse. Rhea had brushed off the warning then, but now those words echoed in her mind and amplified her fear that her mother had been right all along. I'm fine, she managed, but the shakiness in her voice betrayed her. The truth was, she was terrified, terrified of what her voice could do, and even more terrified that she might never learn to control it. Dr. Evans could see the fear in her eyes, and it made him even more determined to find the solution. We underestimated the complexity of your song, your abilities, he said almost to himself as much as to Rhea. But this is just one attempt. We'll get it right. But Rhea wasn't so sure. The failure had shaken her confidence, leaving her feeling lost more than ever. More lost than ever. She'd always thought of her voice as a gift, something that connected her to the world in a way nothing else could. But now, it felt like the curse, something that isolated her from everyone she cared about. Ty entered the room just as Dr. Evans was helping Rhea to her feet. His face was etched with worry. When he saw the state she was in, his heart sank. What happened? he asked, his voice tight with concern. The counter melody was too unstable, Dr. Evans explained. It couldn't neutralize the effects of Rhea's voice. We need to go back to the drawing board. Kai looked at Rhea, who seemed so fragile in that moment and felt a surge of protectiveness. Rhea, you don't have to keep doing this, he said softly, placing a hand on her shoulder. Maybe you should take a break. Regroup. Rhea shook her head, though the exhaustion in her eyes was evidence. No, we can't stop. We're running out of time. The longer we wait, the worse it gets. I can't live with myself, knowing what my voice is doing to people. Kai sighed, knowing there was no convincing her otherwise. She was right, of course. They couldn't afford to waste any more time. But he hated seeing her like this. So worn down and scared, he looked at Dr. Evans, silently pleading for some kind of reassurance. We'll find a way, Dr. Evans said firmly, though he wasn't entirely sure who he was trying to convince, Rhea, Kai, or himself. We just need to approach this differently. The failure of the first attempt left a deep mark on Rhea and she began to doubt not just her ability to control her power, but her ability to sing at all. The joy that once come so that had come once so easily, the connection she always felt to the music, now seemed to slip away. Every note she sang was now tinged with fear, every melody laced with uncertainty. She found herself avoiding the studio dreading the moment when she would have to try again. Instead, she spent long hours alone, her mind racing with thoughts of what could go wrong. Days would pass by as she lost herself in her favorite books or other hobbies. Try as she might, it didn't distract her mind for long. She remembered the looks in her fans' eyes, the way they seemed to lose herself, themselves in her music. She often remembered how powerful she had felt how quickly that power had turned into something dark and uncontrollable. Meanwhile, Kai was struggling with his own doubts. He had always been the one to push Rhea, to believe in her when she didn't believe in herself. But this was different. This wasn't just about her career or her talent. 
This was something much bigger, something that neither of them fully understood. He couldn't shake the image of Rhea in the studio, her face pale and drawn, her voice trembling with fear. She'd always seemed so strong, so sure of herself, but now she seemed to be slipping away, and he didn't know how to help her. He spent hours going over the data with Dr. Evans, trying to find a solution. The more they looked, the more complicated it seemed. The frequencies in Rhea's voice were unlike anything they'd ever encountered. So complex, so layered, that finding a counter melody that could balance them seemed almost impossible. But Kai refused to give up. He knew that if they didn't find a way to help Rhea, she would be lost to them, to the world. That was something he couldn't accept. One evening, after a particularly long and frustrating day in the studio, he found Rhea sitting on the floor of her apartment, staring blankly at the wall. She didn't even look up when he came in, and it broke his heart to see her like this. Rhea, he said softly, sitting down beside her, talk to me. She didn't respond at first, just kept staring at the wall as if it held the answers she was searching for. Finally, she spoke, her voice barely above a whisper. I don't know if I can keep doing this, Kai. I don't know if I can control it anymore. He reached out and took her hand, squeezing it gently. You don't have to do it alone, he said. We're in this together, and I believe in you. I always have. She turned to look at him. Her eyes filled with tears. What if I hurt people again? What if I lose control? Kai shook his head, his grip in her hand tight, tightening. You won't. We'll find a way. We just have to keep trying. She nodded, though the doubt was still there, lurking beneath the surface. But for the first time in days, she felt a glimmer of hope. Maybe, just maybe, they could find a way through this. And so with Kai's support and Dr. Evans' guidance, Ray prepared herself for the next attempt. She didn't know if they would succeed, but she knew they had to try. Because the alternative, giving into the darkness, letting her power consume her completely, was something she couldn't live with. The days blurred into nights as Raya and Dr. Evans continued their work driven by a sense of urgency that gnawed at their very nerves. The pressure was immense. Each failed attempt brought them closer to despair, but they refused to give up. Rhea's voice grew raw from the constant singing. Her vocal cords strained to the limit. Each note felt like it was being dragged out of her throat, leaving a burning trail in its wake. The edges of her vision blurred with the effort, a dull ache began to settle in her temples, pulsing in time with the beat of the music every time she sang. Even the air in the studio seemed thick with tension, every breath a struggle as she pushed herself to keep going. It was during one of these late night sessions, when exhaustion had dulled their senses, that inspiration struck. Dr. Evans had been reviewing ancient texts on sound healing Delving into the knowledge of forgotten cultures, he discovered a particular ancient melody, one used by healers to calm the mind and restore balance to the soul. It was a long shot, but it was all they had left. With renewed hope, they set to work. Dr. Evans adjusted the frequency, matching them to the notes of the ancient melody. Rhea listened intently, feeling the vibrations of the sound resonate within her. It was different from anything she had ever heard, a melody that seemed to wrap around her, both soothing and unsettling. As she sang, Rhea felt a flicker of hope, but it was quickly overshadowed by doubt. What if this was just another false start? What if this melody, like all the others, couldn't control the darkness growing within her? She pushed the thoughts down. Focusing instead on the knot, on the notes, but the fear gnawed at her, a constant reminder that one wrong move could spell disaster. 
the hauntingly beautiful tune seemed to reach deep into her being. When she sang, something clicked. The notes flowed effortlessly, intertwining with their own melody in a way that felt right. There was dissonance. Actually, there was no dissonance, no painful feedback. Instead, there was harmony this time, a perfect balance that filled the room with a sense of peace. Dr. Evans watched in the screen in amazement as the sound wave stabilized, the chaotic spite smoothing into a gentle rhythm. It's working, he whispered, his voice filled with awe. Rhea, it's working! But the true test would come when they played it for her fans. As Dr. Evans fine-tuned the last of the settings, a sliver of doubt crept into his mind. What if the melody wasn't enough? What if it unleashed something more uncontrollable? He pushed that thought aside, but the unease still lingered, like a dark cloud hovering just at the edge of his consciousness, waiting for the right moment to strike.